um, with your permission, I want you to think about these questions that I have been asking myself. So these are personal questions that I want to share with you, right? And maybe you could think about them as well and think about them. The first question is the following. What if you, viewer and listener or listener, you got infected by coronavirus? And what if it wasn't mild? What if it was critical? Now, it's not a pleasant thing to say, to say, it's not a good question, I mean a pleasant question, but we're talking about leadership, so we have to talk about reality. Is it possible? It is. It's happening to hundreds of thousands. And it's said that in the end, 8 billion people will get it over time. So what if you are one of those people who will get it? If not now, this next month. Is it possible? It's possible. I think about this all the time. And what if it was critical? What if you don't end up making it? And if you have a family, if you have a team that depends on you, then maybe it's a valid question. What if we make it this time and we don't make it the next epidemic? What if the next epidemic is airborne with a fatality rate of 50% and it hits children? Is it possible? Of course it's possible. So what if this happens? What if you don't make it next time? Okay, let's escape these questions if you don't like it. What if this happens to somebody whom you love? I personally, my father is more than 80 years old. I have other members of the family who have immunity, immunity issues. They are very vulnerable to this. It can happen. This is at home. This is not a hypothetical issue. It is happening. These are real questions. And what I invite you is to think, we have been given, given this precious gift of time to reflect. You know, it's said that 70 million people, 70% 70 of people hate their jobs. Okay, if they hate your job, now they're at home. So now it's a, it's a gift. So now we're stuck at home. If you want to call it stuck. If you want to call it in a different, more positive way, it's a gift for us to sit and think. Even better, if it's a, it's a gift for us to think, to sit quietly and in silence and reflect about this. Watching news once or twice is enough. So you don't need to bombard yourself with this. Use this amazing opportunity to sit in silence and reflect. Reflect about the following. What about the choices that you have made so far in your life? Which of these choices, because it's an existential issue, a threat that we have now. That's what's on the table. It's that time in history. So what about the choices that you've made so far in your life? What about the good choices that created the reality that you, know, that you would like to live more into? that you would further, want to further create. What about the good choices? It's time to ask yourself, what are these the good choices? And how you can do more of them? What about the not so good choices that have been created unnecessary mess in your life? It's good time to think and reflect about these. The good choices, the consequences, the bad choices, and the consequences so far. What about your relationships? What's about the quality of your relationships? What about your share of the responsibility for the mess in these, some of these relationships? Because my friend, whoever talking about, when you talk about relationships, worst case scenario, if the, this worst case scenario happen, one of you will not be there. Either you or the other side of the relationship. And in any case, in general, if you don't take care of your relationship, you will probably end up soon because we need relationships and you will end up alone. So it's time to reflect about our relationships. What about your definition of success? Your definition of money? Your definition of power? Your definition of fame? And to what extent these have been consuming your life, you're chasing these. 
And what do they mean in the context of this global crisis that we have? What about your priorities? Not the one that you think you have, the one that you really have, the one that you can that consume your physical time, your intellectual time, your emotional time, your financial time, your resources. What about these priorities? And what should real priority, your real priorities be? What matters most in your life? It's a wonderful opportunity to ask this question. What's the purpose of your life? And what contribution are you making to give meaning to your life that justifies the difficulty of the nature of this life? Because without meaning, if life is unbearable, there has to be something that you live for. And the last question that summarizes all of this, what kind of person do you want to be when all of this is over? What kind of person do you want to be when all of this is over? and before the next one comes. My last point is that I'm optimistic if we learn from this. And I feel that it's our duty to come out of this better. Because we don't want our children to go through this. If we don't, we will live in a crisis and another crisis and another crisis until we get the kind of crisis that we can't handle. And I will close by saying, I believe I have faith in the power of goodness. I have faith in the power of every good that you do, because it will pay back you know, multiples to you and to people around you, sooner or later. I have faith in the power of hope, because that's what makes us overcome. And I have faith in the power of love. And this is not a new age thing, because my friends, look at the nurses who are risking their life to save people. Look at doctors. Look at the generous, generous donations by so many people. Look at the rescue workers. Look at the volunteers. Look at, look at these people who are our main, maybe the only defense line. Are they doing it for money? They're not. They're doing it out of responsibility and love. And in the end, that's what leadership is. Because leadership is love in action. And only love will save us. Thank you so much.